hello beautiful people of the world hello it is sunday uh october 27th 2024 just as i was getting ready to walk out the door i got a message from a young lady who um her mom and I worked together at the University of Chicago for years. She died today. I, I mean, that, 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 that hit me like a ton of bricks. That hit me like a ton of bricks. And I don't even know who to call Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> so there's two ladies that I loved and adored that have passed. I told you all about the lady last week, my, my um, classmate's mom passed. Her service is the same day that my father passed on the 29th. They're having the viewing Tuesday, and I plan to go to the viewing. Um, mm -mm -mm. <sighs> and then, you know, just trying to accept that my classmate passed, and they had a um. Uh, celebration for him last night i didn't go i didn't i didn't make it um i was supposed to go to i was i knew about that and um and uh i had a 60th birthday party to go to i didn't go to that either Mm -mm -mm. Anywho, how you guys doing today on this grand day, grand, grand Sunday morning? Uh, I'm a little upset. I was telling my sister about it. Christopher and I had a, I don't even know what you want to call it, but it wasn't good yesterday in the store to the point where this white lady and black lady, black man the white lady I believe thought that he was trying to attack me and you know in our society today with black boys um, they're already looked at as a threat and we were in a predominantly uh, well to do neighborhood area um, and this is how he, he acted yesterday. And I am still very hurt. Um, I am I just, you know, you know, I'm going to tell y'all, this thing called being a parent is bullshit. And I never wanted to be one of these people. Um, I make so many sacrifices for this boy. I have made so many sacrifices for this boy. And yesterday, he treated me like I was a bitch out on the street that he had no regard for. Um, it all started because Christopher is under the, uh, under the, um, he's under, and, and I take fully, I take full blame for this. He is under the perception that I can 
afford or I can buy him this expensive shit that he wants. Um, I cannot. I cannot buy the things that Christopher desires or the things that Christopher wants. I have a house. I was just telling my sister, I said, I am barely making it. And that's real talk. And I feel really bad right now because I was supposed to do a, um, I was supposed to do a, um, uh, um, lingerie custom video for two guys. And my leg is hurting me so bad and I didn't do it. And so I need to do that because one guy already sent me a hundred dollars and I don't want him to think that I'm taking his money, you know, because people get real funny about giving you money and you ain't did something for him. But I am barely making it. And I had my sister laugh and I said, you know, I love the fact that I have a house. I wouldn't trade getting a house and all the stuff that I had to do to get a house. I said, but baby, and I make good money. I said, I look in this mirror. Every time it's time to pay this house no and cuss myself out and say, bitch, what the fuck was you thinking? Um, it's a lot of responsibility. I don't regret the responsibility of having a house. But the lady, it is her. Oh, yeah, that is her. Um, I didn't recognize her. She didn't look like herself. Yeah, but that's her. I don't know how to think I want to speak to her. So he's just under this perception that I'm supposed to get him everything that he wants. And I cannot, I cannot get him everything that he wants. I cannot, I can't afford to get him everything that he wants. recognize you. I said, I don't want her to think I'm not speaking to her. <laughs> you look beautiful in your pink. I'm in the process of just thanking God for 26 years as a breast cancer survivor. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes, and he's good. Yes, and you look wonderful. Yeah, you look, I saw you with all your pink on. You look beautiful. Okay, okay. Well, praise God. I was just saying to um, on this video that I just got a uh, message that uh, a lady that I worked with for years at the University of Chicago died this morning of cancer. You know, and it's just sad. Right, right. Wow. 
Yes, yes. Oh my God. Okay. Right, I understand. I understand. Okay, okay. Well, I'm definitely keeping her in my yeah, prayer. I will. Okay, well, good to see you. Okay, love you much. Okay, all right. Have a good Sunday. All right. She's a sweet lady. I met her. I can't even tell y'all her name. She probably told me her name, but I don't even remember what it is. But I always, she always, always speaks to me. Always. Chris and I have helped her. One day she was coming in. And she, she walks with a walker and a cane. And Chris and I, uh, I'm going through my alley because I ain't been back here in a minute. I need to see what's happening on the back of my house. And Chris and I have helped her with her groceries and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, I can't remember her name, though. She told me. I can't remember it off the top of my head. notices on the garage and advertisements. I'll come back here and get that. Yeah, she said it was pink day. 26, 26 years of a breast, breast cancer survivor. Praise God. But anyway, um, is my fault because you know whatever Christopher asked me for I, I very 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 rarely say no or have said no okay um, I have overcompensated and I know that I have because of the lack of that other person not being there and I know that I have done things and I have made sacrifices beyond measure. Um, I never, ever, ever wanted a job like the job that I had for the last 10, 11 years as a, a street and sanitation person um, working in the alley dumping garbage. I'm not trying to act like I'm better than that, but I feel like I was better than that. It was grimy. It was nasty, but I had to do what I had to do because I had no man. I had nobody that was going to help pay my bills and was going to help keep a roof over my head and my young child's head. So I did what I had to do. I couldn't find a job. I had been looking for a job for almost two years. And because I didn't have any college education, I'm very intelligent. I'm very smart. But I didn't go to college. I didn't I did go to college. I didn't finish. Um I took this job because it paid good money at the time. It paid $19 an hour. It was making more money at the time than what I was even making at the university. And so um, I took it. I took it because it had I had great it had great benefits. It had insurance. I had been on public aid for a year and a half, and I didn't want to stay on public aid. And this was all because I lost my job. They phased my position out right up under me, and and I had there was no warning. So. I said all of, all of that to say that when I had money, free money, and I had money, 
I I um would just, you know, buy Christopher whatever he wanted. And even now, with me not having me having this house, I still buy Christopher whatever he wants. But lately, he feels that I should buy him these expensive things and I don't have the money. And I was telling my sister that, I said, we were talking about that, my sister and I, and she was like, I know. She said, we tried to tell you not to buy no house because the house is responsibility, you know, a lot more responsibility. I said, I know, I know. She said, I know. She said, I know you wanted a house. She said, I know. She said, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have bought a house. But see, what happened was, I didn't expect for my car, which you never do, right? You never expect for these things to happen. I didn't expect for my car to break down. I didn't expect for my cat to get sick. These were unexpected things that I didn't expect to happen. This is why you need to save money and have money for these days of unexpected, un, unexpected, unexpected things that will happen. So, it all started Friday when he was putting all this stuff in the in an Amazon uh, shopping cart in the cart and he was saying that he wanted this polo shirt it was a hundred one shirt was a hundred and thirty five dollars one shirt and I said who you think gonna buy that then he came up with something else that he wanted and he's got all this shit in the car. He got this this hat, which the hat was twelve dollars, okay. But I bought you two of those hats. You don't even know where the other one is at, okay? You got the black one, but we don't know where the blue one is. He said, "Well, when you packed up my stuff when we moved, I think I think it says there." So he wants these shoes. That's $260. He wants this polo shirt. And then he, he was naming off some other crap. I ain't got it. You know. <laughs> I think about how almost. If I hadn't had my mama. I wouldn't have been able to get this car fixed. This is $4,000 to get this car fixed. Okay. And so when I think about, when I think about how I'm struggling, because there's, 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 there's no man here, right? So, it all started with that on Friday. And then he said he wanted to get his haircut this coming week. Well, he doesn't need a haircut this coming week. He just got his haircut week before last and it has not even grew. It has, has not even grown. So, so it's $40 every time he goes to the barber shop. And the barber will line him up just give him a, a lining for forty dollars he don't even get a haircut i don't have forty dollars to keep giving you so he got mad about that so then on friday when i he stayed with my mother when he when he facetimed me on friday you know i had worked all day i had been up real early on friday i was a little pissed off not completely pissed off at my friend my friend had a tooth pulled and we were supposed to go out Friday well we didn't go because he had his tooth pulled so he, he was in pain all right but I was a little miffed about that but and so now you coming at me with all of this all of this all of this you know and so then he comes to me and he says he wants to get his hair cut and I told him that 
he didn't need his haircut this week coming up. So he got mad. So then when he FaceTimed me Friday, he was still kind of mad. So I was like, look, I was like, is he, you and you, I, he stayed home Friday because he had the MRI on Thursday. He did great. But he was having some side effects from the contrast of the um the 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 stuff that they had gave him the dot. So I let him stay home Friday to rest because he said he didn't feel 100 percent So you and stayed at home all day, you went lallygagged around, you went laid around, you went, you know, I had to work. So um he wanted to keep talking to me. And I was like, Chris, I'm not going to keep talking to you about the same thing. I said what I said. You're going to get a haircut next week. All right. So then here we go to come to Saturday. So Saturday, you know, as I told you all in the video, we went out to River Oaks. I mean, we went out to Ross. And we was looking around in Ross. So we in Ross. So there's a little girl. How it started was there was a little girl in the, in the store. And she was begging her mom for a toy and her mother was telling her no that I'm not gonna get that so her and the mother her, her the mother and I made eye contact and I was like and she was like I should have left her at home and I was laughing so at this particular time Chris was standing there and I was like see that's that's how y'all act when y'all can't y'all don't y'all can't get nothing y'all start having a tantrum because he was looking at her too and he kind of like looked at me like oh wow she's really like you know having a fit about this so she was like, but mommy, I want it. You know how kids act when they begging you for something and you tell them no. So I said, yep, that's how y'all act, young and old. So he was like, I don't act like that. I don't act like that. I said, no, you don't, you didn't, you don't, you don't do that. I said, but you get an attitude when you can't get what you want. I don't, like I said, I don't act like that. I don't act like that. I don't act like that. You know. So he, so it's up to other ladies black ladies on the other side of me and they just looking at him because he just you know and they was like so he walks away so I said come here I said come here I said where you going come here he keeps on walking like I ain't even talking to him so the other the two black ladies they was just, they was shaking their head you know first of all the fact that you walked away when I told you to come here and you kept walking and you ignored me and walked away from me as if you didn't have to do what I told you to do. That was embarrassing. And they shaking their head probably because they was like, this bitch ain't got no control, okay? And he kept on walking. Like he a grown ass motherfucking man. Like he can just keep on walking. Like I'm a bitch on the street that's talking to him and he gonna ignore me and keep on walking. So I said, come here. He keeps on walking. So the other two ladies said, mm, like that. She was like, teenagers, teenagers. I said, yeah, teenagers. She said, I know. She said, she said, what is he about 16? I said, yeah. She said, mm-hmm. She said, yeah, I got I got a 16-year-old. She was like, that's why I leave him at home. She was like, because you know, that don't make no sense. They talking about my kid. Because it's true. It didn't make no sense. So I said, yeah, yeah, you're right. I said, I should have, that's what I should have did with him. So I follow him. And as I follow him over to where he was, I said, D you heard me tell you to come here. You gonna keep on walking? And so he turns around and he goes, I, yeah, I kept on walking. He said something. I don't remember exactly what he said at this particular moment. I cannot remember. But I walk up to him and I said, when I tell you to come here, that's what the fuck I mean. That doesn't mean for you to keep on walking like you didn't hear me. Well, I kept on walking. It might have been that that he said or something he said. And next thing you know, I saw motherfucking red and I grabbed his ass up by his collar and I had him. And so he got pissed off because I grabbed him and so he grabs my hand with his hand and he's pulling my hand I said let my hand go you know and I said come on come on we gonna leave we, we, we leaving the store we leaving we, we, we I was gonna let my mother finish shopping I was gonna take him to the car and jack his ass up but he wouldn't leave and, it, it, and he's strong too he's strong 
okay? So now we are in a tussle. We're tussling back and forth, back because I'm trying to pull him out the store. He's pulling back. He ain't going nowhere. He, he, he decided he ain't going. Now, if that had been my mother, you would have brought your ass up out of there. Ain't no way I would have resisted my mother. That's like resisting goddamn arrest when it's your mama and your daddy telling you to move or to do what they tell you to do. I don't know what the fuck is up with these new kids. So we tussling. Now we're at the point where we are moving motherfucking racks in the store. So now this man walks up, black man, who was cleaning the store, had a broom. He's like, whoa, 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 because we moving racks. He's like, hold on, little homie, hold on. I know you ain't finna, you ain't finna, you ain't finna do this up in here. Now a white lady who is passing by, and again, no, 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 nothing against white folks, but he's a black boy in America, and because there's so many of them to do carjackings and robbings and all of that, and we're in a predominantly white area. She must have thought he was attacking me. She's like, do you need some help? Do you need some help? Do we need to call, we need to call somebody. Now she ready to call the goddamn police. Cause me and him is in the motherfucking store acting the goddamn fool. She's like, are you okay? Do you know him? I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. And I'm still trying to get him to come about the store and he store and he's still resisting. So I say to the white lady, I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I know him. I said, this is my son. She's like, oh, 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 okay, okay, because I was just, you know. Because she probably thought the little motherfucker was trying to steal my purse. Or he was trying to do something to me in the store. He was trying to assault me. You know what I'm saying? So, she's like, because I, you know, because she said, and then she said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, um, she said, I'm sorry for, um, for stepping in, overstepping. I said, no. I said, no. And I still got him. I said, no. I said, you don't have to apologize. I said, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, you know, you um, asking me what was going on. But she was ready to call the police. She was looking around saying, we need to get somebody. We need to get some help. We need somebody. And the black man, I think he knew that he was my son. Because he didn't, ever, he, he didn't ask them questions. He was like, I know you ain't finna do this. I know you ain't about to do this to your mama once he realized that he was my son. And so I said, put your hand down because he, you know, he holding me. And um, so I finally let him go. And I kind of like nudged him when I let him go because like I said, we was moving racks. And um, I, I, I was I was seething. I was so mad. I was seething. And I don't know honestly what I'm what what hurts me more. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's what he did. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm, hold on y'all, I gotta get some gas. I don't know if I'm hurt or mad. I don't know which one I am.
I'll be back. Thanks you guys for waiting, sorry. I'm so glad I came over here to get some gas in Indiana. I try not to get my gas in the city no more because it just costs too doggone much. And this gas over here was only, only it was $39 and I filled it up. I wasn't all the way on E, thank God. But, um, so, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm more hurt about. I don't know if I'm hurt or I, I'm, I'm angry, but I can tell you, I was seething. So by the time I got over there to my mama and I told my mother what had happened, she was just shaking her head. She was like, you got to be kidding. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm not. And, um. And um, she was like, you know, and my mother been telling me, cause and my mother, you know, my mother and I both, we 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 have spoiled Chris, you know. And you know, don't get me wrong, y'all. You know, I, I'm not trying to act like you know spoiling a child is the worst thing, you know. But I can tell you this, what I do know, um, he's a brat. He's a brat. And he has this, this, this. He just feel like he should get whatever the fuck he want to get, and that's just not how. That's not how life come through here. That's just not how life work. 
you know it just don't work that way where damn i knew i was gonna come the wrong way it just don't work that way it just don't work where you get where you get everything that you want you know i don't get everything that i want you know i don't you know and it's like what make you think you should get everything you want and I work every goddamn day. I go to a job every day. And if I don't work and I don't have no time, guess what? I don't get paid for it. So I, I can't I can't afford to miss a dime out of my paycheck. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not a dime. You know, and 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 Y'all, I'm just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so motherfucking frustrated right now. I am so frustrated. And so, as I said, I don't know. Even though I'm telling y'all I can't afford to miss a dime. I'm, I'll tell y'all about that in a minute. But I can't afford to miss a dime. You know, and I was telling my sister, I said, you know what? I said, I am barely making it. I said, I make good money. I said, but everything is so damn high. Everything. This will be the first year that I probably won't buy a Christmas presents. And probably not a whole lot of them anyway. You know. And I'm like, and you got the nerve and the audacity to be in your feelings or feel some type of way because I didn't I ain't I ain't bought you. Um what you want I'm telling y'all I'm just what's going on down here the police is down here what's going on oh is, the, is it a pumpkin what's going on must be some kind of oh it's a pumpkin um, pumpkin Halloween patch thing over here. There's a whole bunch of people over here. Everybody dressed in costumes and stuff. Oh, okay. That's what this is. Bouncy houses. I know I see all these police lights flashing and stuff. It's a whole pumpkin uh, patch thing going on. That's what they do when they direct the traffic. for the kids that's really nice like I said I'm not big into Halloween but I am glad that um, they do something with these they have these kind of events for children I had said that I was going to put a bowl of candy on the porch and let kids just get their own candy I ain't for opening up the door handing out candy. I really not. But, um, like I said, I, I take full responsibility for Christopher um, being the way in which he is. And um, Christopher is a sweet, loving, kid. He's a good kid. I don't have any problems out of him. But when he thinks that when he doesn't get his way or he thinks that I should do something for him or I should give him whatever, however, kind of whatever way, you know, then, then he gets, you know, then he gets the attitude. You know, he has an attitude. And, um, You know, I just, 
<laughs> so that's what happened. So I'm still upset. I'm still upset. So he stayed with my mother last night. He'll come home tonight. And he, 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 we didn't say nothing to each other. It was just a w really weird and strange day. It, it, um, it, 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 it spoiled my whole Saturday. Um, my father died at noon or sometime in the wee hours of the morning on Saturday morning. We found him on a Saturday. His death is, his death anniversary is Wednesday. And, um, for years after my father passed in 2016, I did not enjoy Saturdays anymore. Saturday was always my favorite day of the week. And I just didn't enjoy Saturdays for almost four years after he passed. Every Saturday, I would think about him and think about him, me going back there, finding him dead every Saturday, every Saturday. And um, then we had the pandemic and you couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't do nothing. You was in the house. So then I wasn't enjoying Saturdays anymore. So I just started back like enjoying Saturdays again, being looking forward to a Saturday. I love Saturdays, you know, and that was my favorite day of the week was a Saturday. Because Saturday always was the day when I was a kid. We used to go to the movies, we used to go to the mall. My mother used to do something with us every Saturday. And so for the longest, a Saturday for me always, again, what I said on the video about Frost the Snowman, always would make me think of something good, you know, good times on Saturdays. And so after my dad died, I struggled every Saturday. I didn't look forward to the to the week, the Saturdays, any, the Saturdays, the weekends anymore. I would be so depressed, and so I'm always trying to not have a bad day on a Saturday. I try to get out. I try to do something. Um, I try to do something fun. I try to enjoy my day. Um, I don't want to be in the house on Saturday. <laughs> I don't, and my because my girlfriend's like, you never be at just stay at home for what? I don't want to just, I don't want to stay at home. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just don't. I don't want to. I don't want to stay at home on a Saturday because I've I've associated Saturdays with good times, and so um um he spoiled it yesterday for me. I was having a pretty good day. I was looking forward to going to noodles and things, which I did. We did go to noodles and things. It was good. But he just, my whole aura was off, you know. And um, then my sister came over with her kids, and she had showed us that she had bought this black Santa Claus, a tall one. And that's where I'm on my way to now to see if I can find him. And she said they had a sale. And so, um, She, when I was just talking to her, she said, no wonder. She said, I realized, she said, I, 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 I kind of picked up on, you know, that Christopher was acting, you know, a little strange. And I said, yeah. I said, that's, that's what it was, you know. And she was like, oh, she said, okay. She was like, you should have told Timothy, which is her son, who's a police officer, grown. You should have told Timothy about it. I said, well, I didn't want to tell Timothy about it. I didn't want to bring it up to Timothy because I didn't want to open it back up. I didn't want to open the door back up of what had happened. I just didn't. So I didn't say anything to um, Timothy about it because it had just happened. I was still mad. I was still hurt. And I didn't want to bring it up right then and there. So I told her, I said, you can tell Diana, which is my niece, and let Diana tell Timothy. You know, and she was like, yeah. She was like, because Chris needs somebody to talk to him. She said, because that shit ain't cool. She said, because if I hadn't known about that, she said, I would have got in his ass. 
and I say yeah. And then my girlfriend, who was gonna buy Christopher um, this, you know, hoodie that he that he wants, I was telling her about it last night. She was like, I'm not buying him that. She was like, he gonna, he's gonna, I'm gonna, have, we, me and him gonna have a conversation before I give him any money for anything. And so, um, you know, like I said, you know, as a mother, you know, um, as a woman, as a single woman, raising a black boy in this society, you know, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm doing all that I know how to do to save him, to keep him safe, to uh, keep him from being uh, looked at as, 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 you know, this, the stereotype that our black boys are stereotype, you know, as being uh, a menace to society. You know, and you do me like this. And I, I'm just, I'm just hurt. I'm hurt in a place that I can't even explain how I'm hurt. And then you let other people get in our business. You embarrass me. And even after they walked up, you still, he still he still was challenging me. I was just too outdone. I was just too outdone. Too outdone. So... keep Christopher involved. I keep Christopher in um in 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 activities with you know other black boys, black mentors, black men. And I you know I'm not trying to sit here and say that you know because he's a kid he shouldn't get angry he shouldn't have feelings he shouldn't feel a certain type of way but why you you know you you challenging the wrong person you know, and like my mother told him Friday, she said, call your father up and ask him to, to buy you all of that shit that you keep asking her to buy you. You know, this man don't give a fuck if Christopher eat every day or not. He has never, ever bought a, a, a case of milk when he was a baby. He has never bought a case of diapers. He has not bought no wipes. He has not done anything. He doesn't even recognize him on his birthday. The day that he came in the world, he's had 16 birthdays in 16 years. And not one time has he called or sent a card that said, happy birthday, son. I love you. Nothing. Nothing. And every birthday, every birthday since he's been in the world, I have made special for him. If it was taking him and his friends out like I did last year and I spent all that money, it wasn't a whole, whole lot of money. But you know what I'm saying. I took them to eat. They played the video games. Then we went to the mall. And... went to the mall we had the cinnamon rolls you know and all of that I paid for everything I told the mamas and daddies you know because it was for Chris so I had four boys and I took them all back home and Every birthday, every birthday, I make sure that he has a great birthday. Um, every birthday.
every Christmas. And just because of, of just because. You know, this is another thing. He's addicted to t-shirts. Every time you look around. I need some new t-shirts. I need some new t-shirts. I mean, Justin bought him some new t-shirts. He needs some new t-shirts. I'm like, I just bought you t-shirts. Every time he wants some new t-shirts, I buy them. Them t-shirts that come from Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington, they not cheap. Okay? They not cheap, but I buy them, some, buy them t-shirts. When we had the housewarming party and you guys sent gifts and Miss uh, Angel sent uh, Chris the money and she sent me money. She sent $250, which was so sweet. That's a lot of money to me. I gave Chris his money. Well, I had the money and I, we bought money out of there. Metal Shrub had sent Chris money make sure he get money you you guys here on youtube brenda angel metal shrub gin on demand um i might be missing some people but um my facebook friends my co-workers everybody has done something for christopher everybody Y'all never seen them, you never met them, you never touched them, you never hugged them, like you haven't never seen me or hugged me or touched me. But because you love me and because you all are fans of mine and friends now, oh, Sammy, how could I forget Sammy? Sammy, Van, um, uh, again, Van and I have met and hung out, but I've never met Sammy. I've never met any of you guys, the rest of you guys, except through YouTube. But everybody has, my point is, everybody has done something for Christopher other than the motherfucker that helped me create this life, a life, and a life came forth. Everybody has done something except him. And when I tell you he don't give a fuck, he don't care. He cares nothing about him. Nothing. He don't even try to pretend or try to act like he care about him. Mm -mm. And yet, and yet, I've had to get, I've had to make a way. I have had to make a way out of no way. Even when I didn't know how. For years. For years. I was on the job that I hated going to every day. I could have stayed on welfare. I could have been a welfare mama like a lot of welfare moms. I ain't putting nobody down. I'm just saying what I could have done. But I went and I worked a job so I could be where I am right now today. Because I wanted a house for years. I kept on saying, I can't afford a house. I don't make the money. I can't afford a house because I can't do this by myself. I can't afford a house. I'm single. I can't afford a house. I'm not married. And then I started changing my way of thinking and I said, you can do whatever you want to do. You, ain't nobody holding you back. Who holding you back is you. Because you got all of these um, preconceived um, ideas of what it's going to be like if you can't do this because you don't have a significant other. You've never had one. You didn't have one when you were pregnant. You didn't have one when you gave birth. You didn't have one all the time you've been raising him. You didn't have one. You haven't never had a good man in your life. And you've always did what you wanted to do. And you always survived. So this is no different. 
believe me, I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, about buying a house, buying a house. You know, and I finally just said, you know, I'm going to do this because this is what I want to do. And not only am I going to do it, I can do it. And again, that was another sacrifice that I made for him because, because I wanted him to live in a house and not an apartment for the rest of his life. I did it for him and I did it for me. But I did it more for him than I did it for me. I did it for him so that I could leave him with some property. So that when I die, he'll have something. That he will never have to worry about somebody saying to him, you get out and you ain't got nowhere to go. You always have somewhere to go. You can do whatever you want to do with this house when I die. Or if I'm not able to live here because I got to be put in a nursing home, whatever. You'll always have this house. And that's how we as parents think. We think of, of we think about our children. What do I, I need to do something to make sure my children are okay or my child is okay? And you know, I know he's a teenager, and I know it's a lot of things Chris don't understand because he is young. But he hurt me in a place that I don't even know how to describe it. And and I know with all of you all who are looking at this video is going to say, you, I know you all are saying to yourself, well, you all are going to be okay. We had all been through this with our kids when they were in, when they were teenagers or when they was young, um, young adults or what have you. Some of you all probably have uh, parents or are a parent where you all have an estranged relationship with your kids. It's common. Um... But Chris and I have always been very, very close. And it just seems that, you know, and I know it's because he's growing up, he's growing into his manhood, things are changing for him, I know. Um, but there's some times and some days that I wish he could go back to being the little boy who needed me, who adored me, who uh, loved me, who um, didn't give me and didn't even beg for the shit that he begging for now you know and I keep saying you need a job you need a job I keep pushing and keep saying you know you need to um, you need to um, get a job you know with a trade you know I keep saying that um I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, I will say again, you know, I take full responsibility for creating the monster <laughs> that I have created. And I don't, I'm not calling him like a monster like that, but I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, I created this, this brat, you know, and you know, I have myself to blame for it. You know? I have myself to blame. Nobody but myself. So. It is what it is. It is what it is. So, anywho, I'm getting ready to go here in here to JC Penney's and see if I can find this black Santa. And um, I just ask you all to pray for me, pray for Chris. These teenage years have been rough. And, um,. You know, I'm no different than any other parent. I'm sure you all have been through this with your kids. I'm sure you have. I know I'm not alone. 
Some of you all are, are just now entering into that phase. Um, but I know that I need to make some changes as a mother, as a parent. I know that I need to stop um, overcompensating. I need to stop spoiling. I need to stop giving. Things need to be more earned. Um, so I got to change. And I got to do some things differently. So I just solicit your prayers. If you don't pray, I just solicit your warm thoughts, your kind words, whatever. Um, whatever that you, that you have to offer. And I thank you guys so much for stopping on by and watching all the videos that I, um, uh, that I upload. And, um, yeah. So thank you all. I really, really appreciate you. I really, really do. If you're here for the very first time, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Get to turn, uh, don't forget to Turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified each and every time I upload a video. And last but not least, leave me a comment in the comment section and send me some <sighs> encouragement because I'm feeling really, really discouraged. Um, but I know it's going to be all right. That I do know because it just will be. So I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. It's Monday again, y'all. Monday again. Monday again. But praise God, we're here to see another Monday, right? God willing, because we don't know what's going to happen between now and in, 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 in the, the wee hours of the night or the wee hours of the morning. We don't know. But if I'm, I forget, God willing, if I'm here tomorrow, if God let me open up my eyes to see another day tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow and hope that you will be here as well in your right mind and in a good healthy state as well so enjoy the rest of your day lovely people and you know where i'll see you in the next cc session is my passion youtube video god bless you i love you all bye